and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my fathers were. Oh, spare me that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. For a thousand years in thy sight are as but yesterday, when it is past as a watch in the night. They are asleep in the morning, they are like grass which grow up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Can you join me this morning as we say the Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Heavenly Father and merciful God, we are so thankful and grateful for the life of Mrs. Tina Hari Passat, for what she has meant to her children, to her grandchildren, her son in laws, her daughter in laws, to the community at large. And so this morning, Almighty God, we come into your holy house to give you praise, honor, and glory. For this life that was well lived. We pray almighty God for your divine supernatural presence. To touch every grieving heart. In Jesus name. And as the service progresses father. May everything that is said and done. Bring glory and honor and praise. To the Jesus that she served. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. We are going to sing this morning's songs that are on your program. I'm going to ask Sister Alana to come and lead us in a time of singing this morning. Amen. The Bible says in Revelation that he shall wipe away every tear from their eye and there shall be no more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain. This morning, our sister Tina is in the presence of the Lord. No more mourning, no more crying, no more pain. In your song, in your song sheets, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus.
morning. We have with us the daughter of Mrs. Tina Ragu, the pastor, co-pastor of this church here in Diamond Village. I want to ask Reverend Dorina Bagauti this morning to come, and she is going to read to us the eulogy today. Good morning to each and every one of us. I like to celebrate the life of my mom, Tina Hari Prasad. She never took my dad's second name. She took his first name because that's how the old people did it many years ago. This morning we are celebrating the life of Tina Hari Prasad. What can I say about my mom this morning? A lot of us know her. Some don't. Tina was a very adventurous young girl. She loved to run around. She loved to do many things as a young girl, but nevertheless, she, she was a strong woman. She was born to my grandfather and my grandmother Ramlal and Itwari at Rock Road, Pinal. Not soon after, her sister came along, Basde Rampasad. And my mom had a very adventurous life. She was strong and she was very vibrant. But when she was 13 years of age, she got married, very young. That is the age some of us will now beginning to start a future in school. She got married, she came to Rabu village, and from there she moved a couple houses away where we are presently, where she presently lived at before her passing. She came into an old carrot house and she would look up in the day and the sun will come in and she would make the joke and she would tell us, she said, um, this is where the stars came through. Even in the day she saw stars and it was a little remark of a joke. She kept us going. You know, she came to live with her husband and they were in love, truly. She was very firm with her husband that she didn't want children until he built her a home. 11 years after she had her first daughter, Sandra, then Indra came along, Nidra came along, Edwin, myself, and Alvin was the baby. Five years after my birth, Alvin came along. She lost her husband. About 31 years ago, she became, a, she was a very, very devoted wife. Even after my dad passed away, she still held on and she still kept strong. I remember growing up, my mom, she will gather all the children, six of us, and my cousins, and she will have us all under one roof. And those were the greatest days of our lives. Those were the best days of our lives. I don't know how she did it, but she took care of all of us, four and the other and us six. And we would have great fun and times, great days, beautiful days. And she took care of us, and after everyone started getting married, you know, she created that place. She struggled a lot. She had a lot to struggle with. Even in all of her treatment, her own licks and all of that. And I said to myself, if the fig trees can talk and the bamboo patch can talk and the neighbor homes can talk, they will give us some adventure of some of the struggles my mom had to deal with. 
She cared for her grandchildren and she loved them with all her heart. She was later blessed with two great grandchildren who she adored and she laughed even over the phone that she had not seen. With them, even they were far away and they are far away. When we will go, all of the siblings, my mom will sit and one thing she had was a firm memory. She never lost her memory. She will tell you from a little girl all her, the things that she had been through and all the things that went on around her, she would never forget. She made us laugh. She gave us joy. She gave us hope. She gave us courage. Today we celebrate the life of my mom. If I were to really give you a page, it will not just be a page, it will be a book of the life that she lived. It will be a book, what she had to endure and what she had to go through. My mom will cry. And even though in the night, with all that she would go through, she would run away because the licks were so intense. But you know what? In the morning when she came back, I have to say this morning, breakfast was made, tea was made, lunch bags were packed, her children uniform were ironed, and it was placed there for us to go to school. When we came back home, we had a hot meal, and she endured. She loved my father, and my father loved her very much. And one thing my mother always taught us as children, she said, make sure and love your children. And it doesn't matter where they go and how far they reach in this life. The main thing is they will remember the love that you give them and they will always return back home. And this is something that my mom taught us. Wherever we are, we always know there is a place at home. She was a strong woman, very strong, very, very strong. And no matter what we all went through, what we all had to deal with, we can go to our mom and we can tell her everything. All the hurts, all the good things, all the laughter, all the joy, what we felt, all the hurts. And she will give us always good words of encouragement. One of the things that stand out to me showing me how strong my mom was. I remember the day that I was getting married. My mom had an accident and she broke her hip and her hand. And I thought she would not come home for my wedding. I was in great distress. I went to visit her at the hospital and she came and she said, don't worry, I'll be there. But the doctor said she wasn't going to be there. At 12 o'clock, the nurse called me and said, watch outside. And when I looked outside, there was an ambulance with my mom in there. My second sister made sure that she did all that she had to do to make sure that I was properly taken care of to leave that home. So it tells me what my mom instilled in all of us, we instilled in our own. So this morning as we celebrate her life, I thank God every moment that we spent all the siblings, everything that we have and who we are, it's because of our mother this evening, this morning. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. This morning we have some special remarks by her daughter, Reverend Chandra Wati Willie. I am going to ask her to come and she's going to speak to us for a few minutes. Good morning, everyone. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we have gotten to say our final goodbye to our mom, the woman that we love and hold dear 
to our hearts. And today we want to just take just one take a little moment and a little time just to honor China Hari Prasad, our mother. Amen. A mother, a grandmother, and a great grandmother. Our mother is a beautiful, loving person. She always made us feel secured. She was someone who we could trust. She was also someone that we could confide in. Her. And she held it in confidence. We could have shared many, many things with her because she was more than just a mom. She was a friend. She was the one that held our hands. And she was the one that led us in this journey of life. She loved all of her children very, very dearly. None was exempted where her love was concerned. She nurtured each one very lovingly and very tenderly. And she taught us all from her experience in life how to live. She has touched a part of me and she has touched a part of all of us that only a mother's love can reach. She lived for her children. She was a great blessing to us, something that we will remember until we breathe our last breath. She was kind-hearted and a very, very loving person. She also gave generously. She gave us wise counsel. She was faithful to the Lord and covered each one of us with her prayers. She was a woman of excellence in her own simple ways. We thank God, I thank God this morning that my mom lived a full life. She welcomed her son-in-law and her daughter-in-laws with open arms and treated each one of them as her own. And I thank God this morning that Jesus saw it fit to save her. Her grandson Christian made sure she was well taken care of and she blessed him. He would miss her dearly. She was very concerned about Christian, especially when he left for school. Chris loved his grandmother dearly, and she was the apple of his eyes. She was Christian cutie. She loved and cared greatly for her children. And the Lord took her peacefully from the journey of life. We honor a great woman today. Many may have blessings be with all of her children and grandchildren. Her great grand, each one is very special to her. She was truly a wonderful person, a woman that we would remember and always hold in the bosom of our hearts. She will never die for us. She will never, my mom will never die for me. She will always remain in my heart. And her grandson, Alexander, her first grandchild, unfortunately, he wasn't able to be here this morning. But he made a request, and I'm going to read. I have a lot of beautiful memories of my grandmother that I will hold close to my heart. 
But yet I am confident and joyful and happy because there is no doubt in my mind that my grandma was a good and faithful servant who lived by the will of God. Grandma left her mark, which is, this is quite true. She left her mark on anyone she met. The lady with a sweet smile and rosy cheeks. Grandma, she always encouraged me to study hard read my Bible, and follow Jesus. I won't forget her. I used to ride my bike to visit her. She would give me her last dollar to go in the shop to buy whatever I wanted. As a young boy growing up, I was very fortunate to be with her in her times of health and strength. She always took me to San Fernando to see the old tree near the library. She always bought me an apple. I have lots of good memories. Most importantly, to put my faith in Jesus. We all learned much from her. We learned from her strength, we draw from her strength and her bravery through her faith in the Lord. I am heartbroken. So on behalf of himself and Felicia, they would like to say how much they will miss their beautiful, kind-hearted, wonderful, blessed grandma. Her smile can lit up anywhere. Her humor was amazing, always marking a smile. Her great-grandchild, Isaiah, and Abby, grandchildren rather, loved her very, very much. She loved to see them wherever she calls her, especially Abby, because Abby is the more talkative one. Isaiah is a bit more on the shy side. We know our grandma is with the Lord Jesus. No more pain, no more burden. Enjoy God's presence until we meet again. Today, on behalf of the Rabu family, you know we are on time, but on behalf of, of my brothers, my two brothers and my sisters, the entire Rabu family, we would like to say thanks to everyone for your love towards us and your support, your encouragement, and your very presence with us in this most difficult time in our lives will be highly appreciated. May God bless each and every one of you this morning. Say hand back, Pastor Joel. The Lord this morning, Mrs. Tina Rago has brought us, has brought her children, her grandchildren, members of the community, to the house of the Lord today. Amen. She loved Jesus Christ with all of her heart. She worshipped Him with great diligence, with great spirit. And as I will turn on this side, she will sit on this side of the building with her grandson. But today she is on. I know she's very happy because all of us have come to celebrate a life this morning. So this morning we have our grandchildren, the grandchildren, amen, and they are going to come a, sing a song dedicated to their grandmother. I'm going to ask them to come at this time, amen, in the sweet by and by.
Pleasant good morning to each and every one. I greet you in the wonderful and mighty name of Jesus. To our grandma, our best friend, the love of my life. Our hearts are heavy this morning as we stand here. We miss you. We thank you for all that you have done for us, for all the lessons, for all the love and the support in all that we have ever put our hearts to do. Above all, we thank you for teaching us to love others the way Christ first loved us. Every day, from now till the end of our lives, we remember you and we cherish every special moment spent with you till we meet again, our angel. We love you forever and always. There's a land that is fairer than day And by faith we can see it afar For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there Oh, in the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore to our bountiful father above we shall offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of his love and the blessing that hello our days oh in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore and we shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed and our spirit shall sorrow no more not a sigh for the blessing of rest oh in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore oh in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore oh in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore say we shall meet on that beautiful shore hallelujah god bless you this morning morning as we sing from our program amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me would you join us as we sing together today
presentation to sum up the life of our dear sister, mother, grandmother, Mrs. Tina Hari Prasad. At this time, would you sit back and just take about a five minutes to look at this special video presentation. All your time waiting for that. 
that second chance For a break that would make it okay There's always some reason To feel not good enough And it's hard at the end of the day I need some distraction into this church. It was not as nice as it is today, but they came in and became part of the program. They sang, they testified, and more so, they were able to study the Word of God. The Bible said, study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed. Sandra and her sister became part of our current program, Bible study. They went out witnessing and talking about Jesus. And many of us who are here today, maybe you don't know them, but I myself was pretty young. And today I'm celebrating a lot more years, 82 years of my life. But I thank God that, uh, that these children, Sandra and uh, her sister, is a great blessing to us. They not only sat and became part of the church, but they, they, did, they became active people in the church. Amen. And so I want to thank God for Sandra and, and Sister. I want to thank God that they supported us throughout. And today we are very happy that we have Sandra and uh, also Darina with us. Amen. She has been a blessing. She has traveled to one or two places. She has gone to Diana and other places. I want to thank God that she is indeed a blessing. Amen. Any of you who have heard her preach or heard her uh, testify, you would know that the anointing that makes the difference, the anointing is with us. And so I want to encourage the family members. I want to encourage every one of you here. You come and hear her preach and teach the word of the Lord. And I'm sure that you are going to be blessed in a very special way. Today, we thank God. It was a, it's a rainy day, and I myself was a little late because I was waiting on a transportation as well. So God bless each one of you. I don't seem to know a lot of you, but I have been the pastor of this church uh, for many, many years. Many years. I became the pastor of this church when I was quite young. 
and my wife who worked with me. My wife who was working with me passed on and she went to be with the Lord. And I want to thank God for my children today. Uh, pastor Joel is the senior pastor today. He works with us in, um, in Palmyra as well. And we thank God for all these people who are working and seeking God on our behalf. God bless you. It's good to have you with us. And God bless in a very special way. I cannot tell you this, but many hundreds and hundreds of people came here and were blessed. They left, they came here uh, sick and they left healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. And I thank God for people who couldn't sing much, but thank God they're singing and they're praising and worshiping God. God bless. We are running out of time, but that's all right. God bless you. Amen. Amen. This morning, amen. We have the very very presentation. Would you sit back and look a little bit? Amen. Praise the Lord. Spend all your time waiting for that second chance for a break that would make it okay. There's always some reason to feel not good enough, and it's hard at the end of the day. I need some distraction.
are working against the time. We have some inclement weather. So we must proceed as quickly as possible. I want to draw your attention to the book of Proverbs chapter 31. Verse 30 and verse 31. The Bible says, Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. If we are to find endurance, encouragement, and comfort amidst the pressures, losses, and tragedies of life, we must turn to the Bible, the word of Almighty God. The word of God is God's direction for our lives today. The Bible says God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. The book of Proverbs chapter 31 speaks of the life of the godly woman who taught her children the principles of life. She is a woman of strong character, great wisdom, many skills, and has great compassion. She is an excellent wife and mother. She possesses the quality, qualities of love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. The greatest of all her qualities is her love and her reverence for Almighty God. Her wisdom defines who she is. There is truly no replacement for a godly woman. The the Bible says her price is far above rubies. She rarely receives any recognition for her efforts. Her strength and dignity do not come from the amazing achievements. They come from her reverence and love for God. Her appearance is never mentioned. Her beauty, her attractiveness comes entirely from her character. Her qualities are mentioned throughout the book of Proverbs. She's hardworking, fearing of God, has respect for her husband. She is a source of encouragement. She cares for others and she takes care of the poor and the needy. I want to tell you today, Mrs. Tina Haripasad exemplifies the godly, fearing woman of Proverbs chapter 31. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us this morning, here are some characteristics of this virtuous woman mentioned in the Bible. She is creative and resourceful, radiating her own beauty in her own unique way. She cares for herself, but knows she is more than just a physical body. She emanates this beauty from her soul, as well as in servitude and in love. She is fully aware of a place in the plan of God, seizing each moment with great intention. This practical and spiritual woman aligns her thoughts, her body, and her actions for the sake of heaven. Amen. The woman who strives to give her life a full service to our family, and to Almighty God. Amen. I want to tell you today that the eternal destiny of this godly woman is a place called heaven. Heaven is a place that was created for women just like these who love God, who reverence God, who serve God with all of their heart. So thinking about heaven this morning gives us a sense of comfort. It is wanting to grieve over the loss 
of our family member. But it is another thing not to know their eternal destiny this morning. And so when we think of Mrs. Tina Harry Passat, we think that she was a godly woman. She was a righteous woman. She was a woman that loved her children and prayed every day that God will bless them and God will make them into good men and good women that will make contributions to the world today. So this morning, as we grieve her passing today, I want to tell you this morning, to know where your eternal destiny lies gives you great hope and great peace in the midst of great suffering. The Bible tells us today, amen, that heaven is a real place. It is not made with human hands. The designer, the maker of heaven is almighty God. The word of God tells us today, I have not seen, as have not heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. The song says this world that we live in is our temporary place of abode. This world that is filled with so much sorrow and pressures of life, this is just a temporary place. This is just the waiting room that we wait in to up your shirt into our eternal destiny this morning. Amen. We are citizens of heaven. The Bible tells us that our citizenship is in heaven today. Amen. What is heaven like? The Bible, the place heaven is just as real as you're sitting in a real place this morning. The Bible tells us it is a place of many mansions. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare that place, I will come again. And I will receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. Heaven is the dwelling place of Almighty God. Heaven is God's prepared place for prepared people. Mrs. Tina Hari Passad was prepared for heaven. Hallelujah. She lived her life knowing that heaven was going to be her eternal destiny. The Bible tells us these words. For me to live is Christ. When she gave her life to Jesus, her star journey started. Amen. She started to serve the Lord. She started to worship God. She started to read her Bible. She started to come to the house of the Lord and pray. Hallelujah. She said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. What do we gain this morning from the passing of this dear woman? We have lost today a dear woman of God. But heaven this morning has gained another sin that is worshiping before the throne of Almighty God. Jesus said these words to us this morning. I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. He that believeth in me. Hallelujah. There is no other way to get to heaven save Jesus and Jesus Christ alone today. Hallelujah. This woman believed in Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of men, the things which God 
has prepared for those that love him. Hallelujah. I want to tell you this morning, she's in a better place. And I don't only say that to make you feel good. I say that because it is a fact this morning that she is in a better place. There is no more sickness in our body, in our body any longer. There are more, no doctor's appointment, no prescription drugs to take. She has been freed from the curse of sin and she has put on the spirit of her immortality and she is in the courts, in the presence of the most high God. There is no more pain. There is no more suffering. There is no more heartache. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us, a prophet in the Bible said, he looked at men and women dying. Dying is a reality of life. We will all come to this junction called death. But he said these words, let me die if I have to die. Let me die the death of the righteous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Knowing this morning, this dear lady, she is a righteous woman. Not in the eyes of men, but in the eyes of Almighty God. The Bible says, precious. God considers it of great value to the amen. Precious in the eyes of the Lord, not in the eyes of men, not in the eyes of society, but precious of great value in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his sins. Amen. When she died on Saturday morning, I believe Almighty God must have dispatched angels to escort her into the, this scene, into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. He sent his angels. And he must have said, Mrs. Tina Hari Prasad, your time has come. Amen. She didn't waver. She didn't say, I am not ready. She was ready to meet her God. She was ready to meet her Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And she made a journey, amen, from this life into the life beyond with Jesus Christ. On the other side. I believe she fell asleep. Amen. She closed her eyes. She never opened her eyes. Here on earth. But I believe when she reached to heaven. And she opened her eyes. The first person she must have seen. Was Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus said to this dear woman. Welcome home. I've been waiting for you. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Revelation. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. From henceforth, yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. She has worked hard. She has invested her time, her energy, her resources into her children, into her grandchildren, into her family today. She said that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Praise the Lord. For the family this morning, the Bible gives us a word of encouragement. And God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, no crying, nor shall there be any more pain. For the former things is passed away. I want to conclude with the words of Proverbs chapter 31, verse 30 and verse 31. Amen. About this godly woman, about this godly mother, this godly sister, this godly member of the community. Hear what the word of God says. Favor is deceitful. Beauty is vain, but a woman that fears the Lord, hallelujah. A woman that fears Almighty God, she shall be praised. 
giver of the fruit of our hand and let our own works praise her in the gates. This morning we are here to celebrate this wonderful life, this wonderful human being that God lent to the family for 83 years. She has accomplished her purpose. She has accomplished her mission. Her purpose in life, as the Apostle Paul was getting to wrap up his life, amen. He said, I have fought a good fight. What is a good fight this morning, amen? What is a good fight? A good fight is a fight in which you win, amen. She has won this morning. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Everything that you sent me to earth to do, I have finished. I have accomplished my mission in life. I have finished my course. And most remarkable of all, he said, I have never wavered. I have never turned my back from God. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he is my Lord and my Savior. And the Apostle Paul says it, even to the last few moments of our life, I have kept the faith. Hallelujah. Amen. She died as a Christian. She died as a believer in Jesus Christ. She was proud to be a believer. She was proud to be called a Christian this morning. And we know where she is. She is in glory land today. Hallelujah. I want you to stand with me this morning. Amen. Our time is gone today. Amen. Amen. We take hope and we take courage based upon the word of the living God. Hallelujah. That to be absent in this body, this is just a case. This is just her remain. This is not who she is today. The real person is in the land of the living. She is in the land of of heaven this morning. She's in glory land. She's worshiping. She's praising the Lord today. We will mourn her passing. And every time we think about her on special occasions, on her birthday on the 26th of December, when we will gather at her home and we will cut cake and we will sing, amen. Lord, remember we sing that song, Our Mother's Love, and we cry. Oh my goodness. We cried, we laughed, we had a good time. She was happy. Amen. There was a joy in her heart. A joy upon her face this morning. Amen. A great joy came from serving Jesus and living for Jesus. I want to encourage the family, live for Jesus this morning. If you don't know Jesus, give Jesus a chance. Your dear mother was a very intelligent, very smart woman. She made the right choices in life. She made the best choice. She gave her life to Jesus Christ. And she served him all her life this morning. So this morning, we're here to mourn. But as we want today, let us remember where she is. When we gather at our homes, when we sit around the table with our children and family, and a name will come up, what will we think about this morning? What will we talk about her? Amen. There are so many things that we can mention. But we will think about most of all the God that she served, the Jesus that she worshipped. If you think about Mrs. Tina Rago, Mrs. Tina Hari Prasad, you must think about the Jesus that she loved and the Jesus that she worshipped. Today she is reunited with him in the land of heaven this morning. Amen. The songwriter says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all our fears are gone. Because he knows, holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. We're going to just sing one verse, and then we're going to have a viewing of the body. Amen. Because he lives on the program this morning, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, because. He lives. All fear is gone because I know. Oh, He holds the.
future. He holds the future this morning. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Hallelujah. I want to do something this morning. I want us to ask us to lift our hands to Jesus this morning. And give Jesus some praise in his house today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To give Jesus the praise. To worship this Jesus that this dear lady worshipped this morning. She lived her life to please Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Because he lives. Hallelujah. Oh, I can face tomorrow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because he All fear is gone. Because I know. Oh, he holds the fear. seated this morning. At this time, we want to ask the family members to remain for a few minutes, but we want to ask all those that would like to come and have a viewing of the body. You can come this way. Orally, we have an entrance, an exit on my left, your right this morning. You come, you view the body, and while we are viewing the body, we are going to sing and we are going to worship the Lord. I'm going to ask, amen, as we come at this particular time, we don't have a few, a lot of time. Please come very quickly this morning. Take a quick view and you move to my left, your right, and we exit the building this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Anybody from the, from the back, would you come and view the body? Amen. And then we could exit and the family will be left.